here we are in continuation from the last episode. Uh, if you are here, you have already checked out all the compositing of the beauty passes, and we've ended up with this result. And the reason why we did this is because we can actually go in here and let me split this. We can dive into, let's say, the reflection indirect and we want to let's say we want to boost the the gamma of this we can actually go in here increase the gamma and you can see the changes in here it makes this look a little more metallic and go before and after and it does all that we can even go in to our emission and do a little color change so let's change the color a little bit to be a little more red and uh yeah we can even go in here and then just shift the hue around a bit now it's green yeah so it's really useful to send everything out into its own passes and even in here we can go in and like boost the gamma we can even change the color to be, let's say, a little more blue. So we have a little more blue in the uh, in the subsurface. So it's really useful to get all those passes out individually. And now we're going to actually work on compositing together uh, some assets using the Z depth pass, which is this one right here, and the not the normal, the position pass. So let's go ahead and start with the position pass. This one is very interesting. What it does is if you look right here, we have four quadrants. We have a purple or pinkish, we have a blue, green, and yellow. And then right here is the world origin. So what's really cool is that this is such a loaded loaded pass that we can actually go in and use volume masks to isolate different areas of an image. So let me go ahead and grab the volume mask. So it's something to keep in mind when you split out these EXR files. It puts them in the red, green, and blue channel. If we're going to be using the position pass as a position, we need to change it to the X, Y, and Z position. So let's go to the position, add RGB and X, Y, and Z. And so now we have the actual positions in here. And we can look, and here's our volume mask. I'm gonna go ahead, uh, clear that guy. And here's our volume mask. And what it does, look at this. It reads the information, the position, of where all the pixels are in the scene and it allows you to create a 3d mask to change things so let's say i want to grab a sphere and i want to affect um just this tail area right here okay we can go in here do mask only and now let's go into that reflection pass right here I want to add a color corrector. I'm going to add the output into the mask effect and we can go in here, it's set to alpha and that'll work great. And what we can do, let's go ahead and show that. Is we can increase the gamma, and we can increase the saturation. And check that out. Let's go back here. And look, it's isolated to just this area. And we can even go in and here and we can soften it, uh, soften the edges of it, and it will still give us that effect. And it's such a useful tool, especially when you're doing compositing in all these complex 3D scenes. And what you could uh, what you could do is um, get a 3D track scene uh, and then attach the position to uh, a null in the scene and you can have that volume mask following that object. It's really cool. So using a position pass is very useful when doing all these compositing things. Um, now let me show you a Z depth pass. 
this is a Z depth pass, at least going out of octane and going into fusion. So if you can see here, it's very blank. You can't really see anything that's going on here. However, if you look down here at the bottom right, as I move my mouse, you can see these really large numbers. It goes anywhere from three all the way up to 60, 65. So how are we getting those numbers? And how can we see them? So right now, everything is clamped and you can't see it, but if you go here at these little three dots on your viewer, hit normalized range, you can actually see it. And I can turn up the gamma and you can see the depth. So there's our depth right there. Now we need to actually normalize those ranges and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. Uh, we need to grab a grade and this comes with the Nuke Diffusion plugin, so please go ahead and get that. It's very, very useful. So if we go ahead and sit here and remember our image, or we can just pull it up here, we know that this stuff right here is in the most foreground, and then this right here is in the far most background. So we need to know what these ranges are in the ZDEP pass. So let's see, right here, it's about three, and then out here, it's about 65. So I'm going to go into the gray node, hit 333 three, three for the red, green, and blue. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do 70, 70, 70. And so now when we look, nothing has changed. And why is that? Well, when you do the split EXR, it only puts the Z depth in a single RGB channel. We need it in all three. So let's go ahead and go there in there and now we have a correct z depth and we can use this for all kinds of things so let's actually go ahead and use this in the composition so i'm going to grab a loader node oh. loader node we're going to grab let's see i'm going to grab a fog asset i'm going to use this one and I'm going to merge it right here with this guy, right at the end of our. Okay, so now that's there. Let's go ahead and add a transform so that we can go ahead and transform this guy. I'm going to have it uh, come kind of in from here and do something like that. Yeah, and then we can actually hit A for mat control. So I'm gonna hit A for mat control. And then I'm just gonna want to get that guy out. I'll shove him into the solid mat. And I'm just gonna pick apart this. And there we go. I want that in the garbage mat. And invert it, there we go. So now we have that. Now if we look at our scene right here, we can deselect the polygon. We have it and we just want to blend that in. And now we can see, we want to have this actually go, let's say we want to have it go behind this brick wall right here, okay? So how do we do that? Well, we take our graded Z depth pass. I'm going to add a color corrector. So let's look at it through there. Well, here's our color corrector. And then I'm going to change the black levels so that it goes behind the wall right here. And then our white levels. Do just about the same thing. And so now if we go ahead connect that up to the effector for the merge we can change this to luminance and now it's stuck behind there which is perfect so we can actually go in here do our burn in and the smoke is set right behind it which is great it's super useful and I can even go in here <clears throat> Let me go ahead and move that up 
add a color corrector node and let's go ahead and make it a little bit more peachy just to kind of match the volumetrics and there we go that's added in there and you can do that exact same thing for just about everything let's say i want to add some of these moths okay it's a pretty simple shot just looks like that let's say i want to add these moths well it's just about the exact same thing so i'm going to go ahead and merge that into the shot i'm going to add a transform node so i can move it over there <clears throat> i'm even going to scale it down let's add i don't need a mat control let's go ahead and grab these guys copy paste i'm actually going to position it so that they're kind of on top of each other just to clean it up and then let's see change this to luminance And now we just need to burn it in and we have our moths. It's perfect. It works great. You can even do a little color correcting as well. Let's even add a little bit of a blur just to make sure that it looks like they're out of focus. And there you go. We added smoke and moths using the z-depth pass that is really cool and really useful so next time we're going to actually be diving into adding effects to this we're going to add a uh, distortion right here we're going to add some fancier glow we're going to add a uh, chromatic aberration we're going to add a film grain and we're going to look at it all through a lot so Thank you so much for joining me on this one, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.